Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Lens Reflections node. And this is another DaVinci Resolve effect available within Fusion. And it is studio version only. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and let's add a Lens Reflections. So Shift Space, Lens Reflections node. And what the lens reflection node does, and let me go ahead and minimize all this so we can fit it in our little window, is it pretty much mimics light reflections on your lens. So it's just that simple. So within our little display here, we've got the option to move our light reflections wherever we want. You could track if you want, but uh, in general, light reflections kind of stay in the same space and move with your lens and not necessarily with light in your uh, shot. So up top, we have three ways to see our light reflections. So by default, it's set to final result. We can also see our reflections alone. So we can move this around and see what our reflections are doing. And we can also select our source regions. And this is where we're going to start out on our source regions. So we can uh, dial some of this in. Now up top here, this node originally was meant to be used within the uh, color grading tab. And it's meant to use this alpha input to uh, use your alphas. And it doesn't work quite the same in Fusion. Now I know I did say the other day on one of our nodes that it doesn't work at all. It actually does. You just have to do some things to make them work correctly. So let me go ahead and cover that. So anytime we do any of these DaVinci Resolve nodes that say alpha mass light sources or alpha limits effects, this is how you would actually get it to work correctly with Infusion. So let me walk you through that. So from our media in, first thing we're going to have to do is add a uh, channel boolean. So let's go ahead and shift space, channel, boolean, channel boolean, channel boolean, however you want to say it. And we're going to input our media into our uh, background. And let's just grab some random alpha and input it to our foreground. So now we've got this. If I look at our alpha, we've got an alpha channel. So even though our regular media has split RGB and alpha channels, it's not quite recognized by some of these uh, DaVinci Resolve nodes correctly. So this is how you want to bring them in. So we'll input that into our light reflections. So on our channel node, all we want to do is we want to uh, go ahead and select copy. But our red, we want our uh, red background, our green background, and our blue background, and then our alpha foreground. So now we've got that. So now if we look at our light reflections node and uh, let's go back to the final result. You can see our alpha is now affecting those lights. So if we go to our ellipse, we can move our alpha around to affect how those lights are shining within our uh, little footage there. So we can use this as art direction. So if I want to make sure our light reflections aren't going on our subject here. I can just move this around to change our light reflections. And now they're kind of staying off her face. And same with uh, alpha limits effect. If we select alpha limits effect, it's limiting that effect. So let's jump back into our source regions. So now we can see what is actually reflecting. And if I go to our source regions, we have different color modes. Well, we have two. We have slow, which is color. We have fast, which is just picking up grayscale. We're going to leave this on color. We can change our brightness of how our source regions are going to pick up. If I go to our final result, we can see how that's affecting our final result. We can change the gamma of our source regions. We can smooth them out. And we can change the color filter. So we can swap the color filter up. 
and we can swap that on the individual red, green, and blue channels. Under our morph operations, this is just how it's morphing that actual little mask it's creating. So if I show regions, right now it's set to shrink and I can change the morph amount. We can select grow, change our morph amount, or we can select opening, change our morph amount, and closing and change our morph amount. We're gonna leave this on shrink. So that's how you set your source regions. Under our global controls, we can change our global brightness. And I'm gonna leave this up so we can see what's going on a little better. We can change our global blur. We can make them light streaks or soften them up. We can change the anamorphism. So we can stretch them out like an anamorphic lens. And we can global colorize. So the more we push that up, the more uh, desaturated it is becoming. Now within our global controls, we also have presets. So we can have streaks, prism, plane, night, bokeh, glints, summer, and we can have a custom. And underneath our global controls, this is where we're actually setting all of our elements. So as you can see, element four is turned off, but we can turn on new elements and adjust them. And that is for each element. And we have four total elements to use. So let's go to element one. And by checking and unchecking this, we're either including it or not including it into our little light effects. Right here for element one, we can change the reflection brightness. We can change the position in our optical path, meaning it's going to change the position within our lens. Under our defocus, we can change our defocus type. By default, it's Gaussian blur, but we can change it to box, triangular, or lens blur. And our defocus just determines how much we are defocusing that specific element. Additionally, we can stretch our element out. We can stretch the fall off of that element. And we can change our lens coding. And if we uh, select a specific uh, coding, we'll get additional options. So if I select violet, you can see uh, our lens coding is giving us colors. But to be able to see what's going on, we have to make sure we up this colorize. So now we can see that color. So under here, we can change the color that we want, which will by default change it to custom color, which is one of our options. But we can select magenta, blue, orange, green, custom tint, and we can use the slider to change the tint. And again, if you're not seeing this, that's because your colorize button is all the way down. It's off, so you're not gonna see it. So make sure your colorize button is turned up. And additionally, we can use custom color so we can change the color of that. And then we can go to uh, reflecting element two, turn it on or off and adjust anything we want in reflection element two. So if I wanna change this color to be a little warmer, I can select a warmer color and there we go. So that is the lens reflections node. I will see you in the next no breakdown.